Hey, it's your girl, Genesis Amaris Kemp, and with me today is Dominic, also known as Dom Brightmon. And here's a bit about Dominic. DTM is an award-winning speaker and certified member with the John Maxwell team. He is the author of Going North, Tips and Techniques to Advance Yourself, Stay the Course, The Elite Performers, Seven Secrets Keys, to sustainable success and contributing author for the upcoming book, Crappy to Happy, Sacred Stories of Transformational Joy in fall. It's already out now. Dom's hosts the Going North podcast, a top rated self-help podcast that interviews authors from all over the world. His mantra is advance others to advance yourself. And without further ado, we're going to peel the onion back with knowing what is crappy to happy, the four keys to rock solid optimism. Welcome, Dom. Woo-hoo, thank you, Budge Genesis. Appreciate you having me on. That's right. It's a chocolate Christian invasion, baby. That's what I'm talking about. They taking over the planet Earth. That's right. Spreading the Hershey's around. That's right. <laughs> and thank you so much, Dom, <laughs> for... <laughs> bringing your creativity, bringing your whole authentic, transparent self, because we're going to really dive deep with crappy to happy, because how many people are living that crappy lifestyle, but they haven't really tapped into their true happiness internally, as well as externally, because they're so worried about trying to compete with other people versus looking for ways to complement or collaborate. So whenever you think about where you are right now and you think about Crappy to Happy, what pushed you to writing the book? Ah, good question. Yes, so Crappy to Happy, Sacred Stories of Transformational Joy. That's right. Folks love transformation for the most part, especially when it comes from crappy to happy, heck, even from fat to skinny or skinny to muscular. And in my case... (laughs) Uh, the year of 2012, where a lot of us, or at least that's what the crazy end of the world, end time marketers would say, it's like, oh, we're going to die the Mayan calendar. Like, we made a movie about it. It's real. It's going to happen. And all that really happens is that in the U.S. of A., we lost Twinkies for a month, and that's all that really happened. But in addition to losing Twinkies for a month, like, <laughs> what really happened was a trifecta of, I wouldn't say tribulation, but a nice little trifecta of setbacks where... Summer of that year, 2012, my father went out for a drive, and he got lost in a small city. Well, kind of small city, Silver Spring, Maryland, about a good 40, 45 minutes outside of Baltimore. And when we found him in Silver Spring, he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, so we had to take away his license. Sadly, after that, a month later, 21st birthday, on my way to IT security class, got into a car accident. Oh yeah, gotta love that birthday gift. And it just keeps on going because after that, got a call in the meeting with the boss and had a whole list of stuff where I was screwing up with some miscommunication issues with some of the other staff. And I thought I was doing a pretty good job, a decent job of not letting my personal life seep into my personal life. And with all of that just piling on, it's like an just imagine a small cupcake with like 10 pounds of icing on it, except the icing isn't sweet. It's It's sour. It's like... It's like two-year-old milk. Like, it was just so bad. It felt so bad and disgusting. And climbing out of that metaphorical snowstorm of nonsense has actually led me to my own acres of diamonds in the personal library, the leadership section of the library, picking up a book by John Maxwell, The Five Levels of Leadership, and realizing that, hey, wait a second, like this is freaking good. And read another book, and that was good too. Read another book and another one. And set out on this journey of really having a New Year's mantra every year. And that was in 2012 that led to 2013, the year of rebirth, where I've been on this journey ever since. And the thing is about this journey, it's going to be a long one, God willing, as they like to say. Because, hey, no one's no one knows the day or the hour. No one even knows the moment. Because the thing is, we, we're promised today if we're still alive but we may not be promised the whole day we have to keep that in mind too and my crappy to happy led to this wonderful method wonderful method if you look get the video version this wonderful method of rave method that's right rave method r-a-v-e 
So the R stands for reading great material. The A stands for audio immersion. So for those listening to this wonderful podcast, you're doing fabulous. The V, visual stimulation. Our eyes absorb a lot more images a lot quicker than words. Like that's another reason why images are always best. And that's why things like Instagram are so popular and why video is so popular nowadays in the strongest form of content because our eyes, we can take those in a lot quicker than just written content. And the cap to put it all together, the E is for encouragement, encouraging yourself and others, because if you are living and breathing, we all need encouragement. So reading great material, immersing yourself with great audio material, V, the visual stimulation, making sure the brain care is good by looking at some great stuff that'll benefit your life, and the E, encouraging yourself and other people. And that's amazing because as you were talking about it, you gave, you gave us a visual representation of the cupcake and the icing, but the icing was comprised of sour milk, which doesn't sound very appealing. <laughs> but then it also walked us through that sometimes that we're going to have those tests, those hardships, the trials and the tribulations, and they're not always going to be conducive whenever we are going through it right then and there. But you have to go through the test before you get to your testimony. You have to go through the mess before the message is unveiled. You have to go through certain things in life. And I'm right there with, with you. Um, based on what happened recently in my life, Dom, November 25th in 2020, I lost my dad. December 1st, one week later, I found out that I was getting laid off from my oil and gas job. It was a Fortune 500 company. Fast forwarding, they, they called me back and decided that they needed me to offload and onboard somebody else who they wanted to put in my position, even though they told me my job was going away and it was going to be obsolete. And the contingency around that is, had I not trained that individual, I wouldn't have received my severance package. Then fast forwarding, August 29th this year, my grandmother passed. Fast forwarding, my cousin was recently diagnosed with leukemia. So it was like test after test after test. And going through grief, whether it's the loss of a loved one, a, a friend, a pet, the loss of a job, grief hurts. And it's like that sour milk analogy with the icing. No one wants to eat that. No one wants to partake in that. And you're just, you know, it's that crap. And you're like, man, how much more? But then if you dial it back and you think about optimism, which you talk a lot about optimism, Dom, and you see, how can I flip this negative situation into a positive? How can I use what has happened to me to what has happened for me so I could come out of this dark wormhole? Right? Mm. Preach. It's a day. Preach right there. Day preach right there. Day go get them. That's right. Oh, you're asking me a question for real, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> How to get out the wormhole, right? Yeah. So when he, <laughs> so in order to get out of the wormhole, would you say that is your four keys to rock solid optimism that goes along with crappy to happy, or do you have another spin on it, Dom? Yeah, those are definitely the four keys because the thing is, especially with 2020, with discovering those four keys that helped me to get to where I am today and where I'm still going is the fact that you have to really take care of your mind. Brain care is really required now more than ever, especially with all the countless messages that's trying to program us in a certain way, trying to get us to lead or be steered in a different way trying to hit us against one another just for no freaking reason to our detriment and you really have to fight to make sure that you tend to your mind like a garden and the wonderful book heck even based off the proverb as a man thinketh and just really just tapping into that so even though last year in particular 2020 when i was reading still but not as much as i used to i still was immersing myself in great podcasts even went to youtube for some great stuff as well, even did multitasking with the gaming as a way to decompress a little bit from reality while in turn listening to podcasts while I was playing games in a certain part, grinding in RPGs, because I still wanted to get some great content that could actually push me forward. So those keys are still 
helpful. And the thing is, like, even though it's in a great acrostic, it goes in great order. It's a word rave, like, hey, glow stick awesomeness. Like, who doesn't like that, especially if that's your type of thing? Like, the thing is, you don't have to have do all four of them at once. They all work in tandem together, but they can be done separately, sometimes even just focusing on one letter at a time. Yeah, because it's like take little small steps and those small steps will turn into big leaps or kind of like imagine giving your child, your niece, your nephew a piggy bank and you give them a few coins to start with as they begin to deposit more coins in that piggy bank before they know it, that piggy bank is going to become full and they're either gonna, going to need a new piggy bank or they're going to need to take that piggy bank that they have and put it in a bank or put it somewhere where their money could grow for them and they'll have to start over in another way. That way they are diversifying their assets and their assets is the money that they have accumulated over the time and it's all the deposits that they have been making. And you can't expect to make withdrawals if you never make deposits. So how are you depositing into yourself mentally, physically, spiritually, and emotionally? If you're not taking care of yourself on all levels and playing fields, then you're not going to be good to help somebody else because you're not even helping yourself. So a broken person that tries to connect with another broken person are going to be two broken people. So not why not get whole and complete and work on you? And as you begin to work on you, you'll start to see how certain things will flow in and through you. And I know, Dom, you have another method that you like to teach on, which are the five C's to explosive growth. And I think we could talk about that along with crappy to happy because they may, they may intertwine. Would you agree or disagree? Uh, definitely kind of, sort of, with all the reading and the action. Sure, it led to this. <laughs> with the five C's for explosive growth, that's right, got explode. <laughs> so now, <laughs> if I was a listener and a viewer, I'm like, what are the five C's of explosive growth? I want to be explosive. I want to grow. I need those five C's. What are they, Dom? Sure thing. Say so one all five at once or one at a time. No, say it one at a time because we need to let it marinate so they could grab a hold of it. <laughs> ah, there we go. Let it all marinate. That's right. That's right. Everybody's a steak, y'all. Sorry, vegans. That's right. The guy, y'all got to marinate on it. <laughs> I was messing with you. The first thing is curiosity. Curiosity. And the reason why is because. Growth happens when you are curious, and this is why it's the first C and really one of the laws of growth in John Maxwell's 15 Laws of Growth, because a curious mind that remains curious, you'll always get better and not better. A curious mind will help you to become better because when you're more curious about something and you learn more about something and you gain more information about something, it either leads you to one of two ways. You're either going to want to learn more about it or you're going to want to learn how to get far far away from it <laughs> and with curiosity one of the things that helped me in my lifetime was starting a podcast like i was that was an idea for me back in 2014 since folks told me i had this radio voice and i'm like all right cool might as well use it for something might as well get paid for it too so i'm like oh yeah i'll start a podcast and then out of nowhere a couple years later took a side quest in writing my ever first ever book going north tips and techniques to advance yourself and that side quest led back to my podcast being called Going North because I was curious about how to start a podcast. So, curiosity. What are you curious about today? Heck, even the pen moment for those listening and have access to pen and paper is, when was the last time I've done something for the first time? When was the last time I've done something for the first time? And that is one question you definitely want to take away with you, especially as a lot of folks are aging nowadays. Folks don't have a lot of aging parents if they still have them around. I know both you and I, Genesis, we both lost our dads in recent history, and it can be rough to go through that grief period. And my dad, he passed away at 92. And one of the things that helped him to really stay alive for a long time is, one, he had a 
really young son <laughs> who was still in his 20s and the fact that he was doing crossword puzzles reading newspapers and he loved to cook so he'd always find new recipes to try it every day and he stayed curious so always remain curious that's scene number one okay always remain curious is number one what are the other four c's ah other four c's sure so the next one definitely commitment Definitely commitment. You have to get started after you're in your phase of curiosity. You can't just stay curious for like, oh, let me gather all this information. Let me grab one of the random books off the shelf. 1,287 facts that'll make you the life of the party. Like, no, we can't be just filling you with information and doing nothing with it. Especially if you're not a party animal or you like to be a wonderful turtle and hide in your shell all the time. So, <laughs> Commitment. Do something with your curiosity. Always do something with your curiosity. Because with the book, the podcast, I gathered information and I just went forth and started. I had a plan in place. And of course, you know, <laughs> the classic Mike Tyson quote, everybody's a plan until they get punched in the face. Well, life is going to hit you like that. <laughs> and you have to get back up. Sometimes it takes a little longer. You have to wait till you get to the nine count to get up. But it's A-OK -okay as long as you get back up. And you commit to starting. Or to go ahead and drop the other three. Or are we going to marinate on that one too? Now we're going to go ahead and drop the other ones. Ah, sure thing. So we got curiosity. Being curious. We got the second one. Committing. The next one is consistency. Consistency is where the magic happens. Like with a lot of these folks starting podcasts now, especially back in the year that shall not be named, even though we all know it existed, the year of 2020, a lot of folks, especially in April, starting podcasts because it's like, oh, shoot, I'm trapped at home. Like, oh, I don't know, maybe I should start a Facebook group and invite every person on my friends list to join the group. Heck, even friends of random people on Facebook and, uh, and ask them to join my group without even saying hello if they accept my friend request. Like, folks have been doing all this wonderful stuff. And <laughs> even though that part of it's not so wonderful, inviting random strangers on social media to join your group is a bad idea. Is the fact that like a lot of folks were taking action on starting that side hustle, that hobby, something they wanted to do for a long time. And podcast mics were sold out for a couple weeks in early April 2020 because folks wanted to start podcasts. And we got so many now, but not all of them have stayed around because they didn't realize how much work it goes into it like genesis like your growth with this show is freaking awesome like you're now hiring out an editor now for your episodes so that we can free up more time to chase more of what you want out of this lifetime so being curious being committed to starting once you're starting staying consistent making sure that growth happens then the fourth c is care because as you're going along in this journey, you're going to have to have self-care in mind. You have to have care for others in mind. You have to take care of yourself. That, that's why Genesis bringing an editor in for her show is a wonderful thing. Because that frees up so much more of your time. Because if you have edited a podcast episode before, especially if you're a Toastmaster like myself who's been cursed with this wonderful gift of hearing every um, er, double clutch word that someone says every heavy breath long pause you hear all of that it's like oh, i gotta get this out of here oh gotta get this out of here oh this person said freaking 47 ohms like i gotta get it all out of here you're gonna need to really have care in mind and i think you got something to add to this <laughs> and the one thing that i want to add for the listeners and viewers the reason why i did not edit my podcast is to be Quite frank and honest, I don't know how to edit. But whenever someone approached me as saying, hey, let me edit your podcast based on what you won for partnering and speaking at PodFest, I said, okay, cool. Let me try doing this editing and let me see how it, how it goes. Because my whole mission behind my podcast is to educate, inspire, and motivate. And it's very conversational flow and coffee chat style. And you can't edit a live conversation that you had with someone in a coffee shop. And that's why I kept my podcast the way I did for so long. And this is, I think, the 213 episode, if I'm not mistaken, because it was real. It was authentic. But whenever I hear other podcasts that I've done for the other three CEOs who I've hosted their podcast for. It sounds all 
prim and crisp and polished because they make bukus of money so they can hire their own dream team to have you know their podcast edited to have it market the graphics and all of that but sometimes in life you have to have those start ugly moments and as long as you are consistent you will not run into pod fade which is where you start on a high note And then you start to fade out because you lose the momentum and you lose the content that you're wanting to put out. But maybe the question is, are you losing momentum and content because it was never really your true passion? You were just jumping on the bandwagon because you saw other people doing it and you thought you could get in line where you fit in. Stick to what you know and do what makes you happy and what you're passionate about and the rest will follow. And go ahead, take us into um number five dom oh yeah the thumb yeah to make it happen that's right the magical thumb the final c is community with explosive growth comes community like the thing is a lot of folks who are top performers elite performers those who are at the top of their game they have mentors they have coaches they have folks in accountability groups mastermind groups even family and friends that truly are their family and friends and i'm not just talking about those by blood sometimes it's better those by in spirit and experience because the thing is a lot of folks are probably folks listening right now they a lot of they may have some folks in the network who are used to seeing them in a certain light like in some places heck it reminds me of this 50 cent quote from like years ago where he mentioned how when he's with when he's with g unit he's the general but when he's with m and m he's one of the commanders and m is the general so Not saying like, hey, one's better than the other here. That was just something from an interview he did a while back because he knows that in some places, folks are going to see him in a certain light. And in other places, the guy who put him on and bought into his vision when he was really getting hot in the streets and building up his wonderful content with all of his wonderful music, like he still respects the guy who put him on. So the thing is, community is the final seek is the most important one. And another reason is because there's going to be times where you're feeling down. And this ties back into the E with the rave method of going from crappy to happy. You're going to need other outside positive influences of wonderful people to help remind you of your greatness, remind you of your past victories. Heck, even even in your mind, some the mind is for two great uses. The two great uses of your mind are for pre-play and replay. Pre-playing future wins in the future, visioning, visioning something for a future, positive vision for the future. And then as you're getting and going along in your journey, replaying those past victories, those past wins, that's all well and good. But sometimes we always need that other person to jump in and remind us like, hey, you're doing you're doing great here. Oh, you could probably improve this. And sometimes it's even better to be around those who are strong enough to be honest with you and give you honest feedback to help you grow because that's really where the magic happens when you're around in a community of people who truly want to see you do better truly want the best for you and truly want you to shine your brightest yes that's amazing and i want to add there too dom is whenever you think about community think about who is in your current circle know who's around you And are they around you because what they could get out of you or are they around you because they want to see you excel? They see you down at the bottom, but they're going to also be with you at the mountaintop. They're the roof terrace in your in your life. They may see that there is a paralyzed spirit in you and they're going to do whatever they can to get you either through the house or they're going to do whatever they can to get you on top of the house cut a hole through the roof and lower you down so they can free you from that paralytic spirit because they know that your destiny is great. Do you have people in your circle who are smarter than you? Because you can't always be the smartest person in your circle. And if you are, that means your circle is too small and you are limiting yourself. Hang out with people who have been where you are, but have surpassed it. Hang out with people who are going to tell you the truth Hang out with people who will mention your name in rooms that you have never even dreamed about going into. Surround yourself with your A1s from day one, the people who have been there with you from day one, 
and they've seen your struggle, they've seen your start uglies, and they've also seen your measures of success. And they're still riding with you because they believe in you. And you know, you need to be that that person for them too, because it's mutually beneficial. And if you think about it this way, sometimes people say, show me who your friends are and I'll show you who you are. Because sometimes people see who we're associated with and they want to lump us in with that individual or group of individuals, even though we may not necessarily be doing the same things. People see what they want to see. And sometimes we have these things called blinders, which are our eyes, where we're not able to see things from a full vantage point and scope because we're allowing convoluted messages and society to deter what we are allowing our eye gate to see, what we're allowing our ear gate to see, and et cetera. So going back to Dom's point of crappy to happy, Think about all the things that he's mentioned and now pair that with the five C's, which are be curious, stay committed, be consistent, care, and community, because all of those things can work together. And as long as you are working together, then you are really greasing the machine so it could run well. And if you don't take time to lubricate the machine, don't be mad when it sticks because you didn't, you didn't do what you needed to make sure the tools and the resources were in place so you can live your life optimally. And Dom, as we begin to wind down, I want you to leave the listeners and viewers with the one or two gems and keep in mind, gems podcast is to educate inspire and motivate and connect our different viewpoints stories and expertise so we could be intersections to help our community and plant the seed for future generations to come Woohoo! wind it down that's what i'm talking about i feel more wound up than anything else and the thing is oh gems all right two quotes the first one my all-time favorite quote to be the man, woo, you gotta beat the man. And that is by Ric Flair. And folks are probably wondering, Dom, what the heck are you talking about? Well, let me explain why. To be the man, you have to beat the man. To be the woman, you have to beat the woman. And, man, that probably don't go over well. But, but hear me out here. <laughs> Think of the, pro- the classic pro wrestling legend, Ric Flair, 16-time world champion. You have to basically be better than what you were yesterday if you're really going to get to where you want to be tomorrow. The thing is, are you better than what you were two years ago? 20 years ago, if you're that old enough to actually remember what the heck happened 20 years ago. Heck, even two weeks ago. Always trying to become better than what you were yesterday. Better than what you were last year. Always having that growth. In a way, explosive growth. So always seeking to be the best version of yourself by beating the past version of yourself. And... Speaking of yourself, the second quote, the gem is advance others to advance yourself. If you help enough other people get what they want out of life, you'll eventually get what you want, as the late great Zig Ziglar says. And that happens when you seek to help others reach their goals and they'll remember you for it. And then down the road, down the wonderful road, karma's a wonderful queen. It'll pay you back in a way you won't even imagine. So be better than what you were yesterday and keep going forward and advance others while you're advancing yourself on this wonderful journey. And now tell the listeners and viewers once again who you are, how they could connect with you on social media, and leave us with your CTA, call to action. Woohoo! Well, thanks again, Genesis, for having me on your show, sharing some wonderful gems. Hopefully, folks walked away with the tennis bracelet of wisdom from this wonderful conversation. And for those who want to learn and hear more from yours truly, head over to DomBrightman.com, DomBrightman.com. Check out the books, buy a couple of copies of those, share it with your friends, family, cat, camel, and penguin. And check out the Going North podcast as well, and subscribe to that, especially when Genesis' episode drops in 2022, it'll be Black History Month. But hey, this content is evergreen. So whenever you see Genesis' name on Going North, just know it's going to be a firecracker of an episode. So check all that out on DomBrightman.com. 
And there you have it, listeners and viewers of GEMS Podcast. You just heard Dom Brightman. And make sure you connect with him. All of his contact information will be in the show notes. So read, read, read and get plugged in so we can see how you are leveling up, scaling up your business and being the man or woman you have destined to be. We believe in you. Now it's time for you to believe in you and start taking actions today to secure a bigger, better, and brighter future for tomorrow. You can't expect to have results if you're not taking actions. And until we chat next time, peace, love, and lots of blessings. Don't forget to hit that bell on YouTube so you can always know when fire content is coming down the hose and also follow us on all major platforms where you're listening to this audio. Signing out. Janice Samars Kemp and Dom Brightman.